Yo, 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 it's the hub. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're going to be reviewing Crisis on FX Part 3. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I wanted. I wanted references. And uh, I, I got a couple. That's all I'm going to say. Um. Guest appearance by the Red Tornado. I don't know whether you watched Supergirl Season 1, so I don't know whether you saw the first appearance of the Red Tornado. But he turned up, but they CGI'd him for this one, which was probably for the best. Was he not CGI in Supergirl then? Oh no. Oh no, not at all. (laughs) There's something I don't want to go back and see. Yeah. Uh, One thing I noticed as well... Like, their CGI, because you have Metello turn up, What one thing I thought was good is that they, I guess they got the actor who played the human version on Supergirl to, like, do the voice. I thought that was good. But, like, the... Pr- it was interesting, but it seemed like an... I mean, for as terrible as, like, King Shark looked before, this seemed like an unnecessary stretch of the budget when i just get the bloke and i'll tell you i mean i I know i know what metallo is underneath but this just seemed more like the silver age brainiac or whatever when he was like a robot it's like i want to just use a bloke and save yourself the money Mm. and the problem was as well which i know is because he popped up in part two for a hot sec but they need to have a talk with their CGI department because all of them walk the same. They walk kind of bow-legged. Do you know how the Dominators walk? Like really wide-legged and kind of waddle. <laughs> he, the, the Metallo did as well. I noticed it in part two. Is l- their legs are like super like bowed outwards and they kind of walk funny like waddle. And I was like, nah, because that didn't suit for the fact it was a robot. But yeah. Our CGI department need to like sort the legs out, cause that's uh, and the white Martians as well. Like the white Martians, Metallo and the Dominators, they all walk really wide-legged, and it just looks unconvincing when they move. That's what kills it. You know what I mean? And the fact it's cool though, a bit random. Although I am confused by one thing: is what Earth does he come from? Is he from Supergirl? Um, if so, when the hell did they go and get him? I'd, I'm, I'm pretty sure he wasn't he with Thorn. I'm trying to think whether he was specifically with Thorn. I think maybe he's from Earth X. I mean, because it would have been. Oh, a, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It would, <laughs> I, I completely forgot the fact they have their own Supergirl. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. So. Because I was thinking that it's definitely not the Supergirl from Supergirl's world. So it's either Earth 1 or it's... Which makes no sense because, again, where'd they get the kryptonite from? And so whatever. So yeah, basically, all all the heroes are on Earth X, uh, an internment camp. And then we're introduced to the Ray... um, and uh, Captain Lance makes his appearance as a high-ranking member of the the regime, as it were. Um, See, this is what confused me, and then they finally confirmed the fit. I'm thinking, like, so is he the Fuhrer? Yeah, and then it and turns then, out Oliver was. Yeah, it, it was Oliver all along, so I... <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think they mentioned I, it. I think, I think they, yeah, I think they did as well. I just got confused They're at some just, point. They were just really blasé about it that you kind of, you know what I mean? Because I'm pretty sure they said it about uh, more than what. I'm pretty sure they referenced the Führer why Oliver was there, but they did it in a way that made me think it was someone else. And then they like addressed him specifically, and I was like, well, who is it then? Who is it? Who is this guy? So yeah. Um, and then you have, they're, they're pretty much lined up and about to get shot. And then randomly Captain Cold turns up and freezes all their arms. Um, that that felt a bit random to me. I think I prefer it when you kind of hear an explosion in the background. Everyone turns around and then someone pops out of somewhere and does something. As opposed to there's tension building and then just randomly like something inauthentic happens. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was my thing about that. <laughs> and then I guess they dash into a ditch and then come out the other. They're climbing up the other side of the ditch, really slowly, and it's like, oh, so why ain't anyone shot them? Because I'm pretty sure, even if you had bad vision, you still could have clipped. Like Sarah Lance was climbing up that ditch real slow, and she was all dressed in white. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better target, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. So then you have, I mean, I'm trying to, they, they, they turn up at, I guess, the Arrow Cave, which is the headquarters of the of the Freedom Fighters, and Wind turns up, you see him, and then he's like the general. Uh, yeah, it's like basically John Connor from Terminator. Mm, yeah, so they, they have to get in, they're planning to, get into their main headquarters and use the portal to kind of get back to Earth 1. Meanwhile, he, flipping, you've got Wynn trying to blow up the facility to kind of trap all the doppelgangers on Earth 1 so that will be destroyed and then their their planet's somewhat safer. They're just Perfectly you know, reasonable. You agree with that? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Their world has been enslaved for de- since Hitler, so decades. Yeah, damn straight. Hmm. I I I understand it, and then you had Alex like fo- oh God. following him around, not very strongly again. Uh, you had the, you had, so yeah, you got that, and then they managed to finally get some wiggle room. You get the, you get um Captain Golden Ray smooching ten times if you didn't kind of grasp grasp the undertones beforehand i don't get why he, why he was like call me leo that that just didn't feel right to me it's like they he should have just been like yo call me lenny i don't get i don't get i don't get it at all i liked his glasses there, there's a captain cold on earth one in there i know he died but didn't like Roy, or did Rory? This is what confused me about that. Like Rory put him back. Yeah, because he he got but, taken out. Like he day, he he joined the Legion of Doom. He was taken out of his timeline while he was still a criminal before he joined the Legends. Okay, so they put him back there and he still died anyway. Yeah, so they put him back and then obviously he did his thing for a couple months, obviously bumped into the Flash and then ended up going off with the Legends and then ran his course and then died. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I guess. Um, So you had that going on and then, yeah, uh, that they get to the base, Oliver tricks his way inside and then you have the Felicity doppelganger... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know why. But this time it took me a minute to like figure out who she was. Like the hair really threw me. Mm. Yeah. Um. I'm just, so like back on. <laughs> back on Earth One. Okay. You, you had uh, Felicity and Iris, kind of trying to get them out the pipeline, and then it turns out they couldn't. And then I'm trying to, because it was very convoluted between part three and four. I'm trying to decide whether it was that when the experimenting was, when they were like going to open up Kara. Because that thing dragged on for ages. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think they at least, they least introduced it there. Yeah, so you can't, yeah. So yeah. Uh, they kind of tried to perform the surgery, and then you got Iris, like, dropping about, and then they managed to get super good. One line I did like, which, again, is annoying because it fuels speculation again, that Kara's like, oh, yeah, my cousin, blah, 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 to which Eobard replies, oh, I met your cousin before in the future. He's fast, but I'm faster. Okay, so what does that mean? Does that mean I have one future? In which case, what's going on there then? Because I can't. If I had, to, if I had to guess, and we talked about this before, if I had to guess, they uh, certain events are in the timeline 
are different, even though they're the same. So there might be an Oliver Queen and a Barry Allen and whatnot over on the Supergirl world, but they're still kids. And I'm assuming Clark Kent is on a farm in Kansas somewhere and isn't as old as the Superman in that show, yeah. Okay, okay. See, that's what I thought about. That's what I thought about, but... Because we know, I guess, Bruce Wayne's of age and prominence because Oliver referenced him in Arrow. Uh, my thoughts are, like, the news. Like, the, you got to think, okay, if Clark Kent's on a farm doing his flex and then he sits down eating his, eating his flipping whatever they eat on a farm, like carrots and stuff, and then he flicks on, puts his feet on, flicks on the news, and then sees all this kicking off, like Nazis in the street, and then sees Supergirl, you're going to be like, oh, that symbol looks familiar. That's a good point. So now I'm, yeah. th- now I'm thinking to myself, this, this has happened now, is this going to be some sort of a catalyst now on Earth 1? for Superman to be like, oh, because Supergirl ain't really done anything on Earth 1 that was, um, that w- would have been, like, recorded by the press, because I guess the alien invasion would have all been covered up, but, I mean, that's the problem, you never see no one running about with cameras or nothing, and it was pretty obvious this time, I mean, you could have explained it away for the last crossover, but you got to think this crossover... Whatever. That's why I'm waiting for one of the shows for that for them to like bring it up or something like that because you have you, people people would getting like blasted on the streets and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's true, and I I do think the lack of extras running around recording stuff is a bit odd. Although I guess it's a budget constraint kind of thing, but you could also make the same argument that this is kind of the norm for that world now but it's not the first time this happens there's superheroes everywhere so you can you even do... make the case <laughs> so you look the other way oh there's yeah, another it's like, superhero it's, yeah. battle don't bother doing anything I, I think it's kind of stupid but maybe that's what they're going for maybe like the Jurassic World kind of thing I thought it was stupid that people apparently are bored of dinosaurs now but how if that's a story you want to tell I guess if they're around enough yes. who cares so to me that reference was kind of interesting that he kind of brought that up, so yeah, yeah he's right though. It's yeah. it's problematic. I think it causes more problems than it solves. This is what they this is the rub they've made, they've made for um backs by ignoring Batman and Superman for so long, and then suddenly pretending they oh no they do exist. And then you got this confusion mm. because all of the Queen have to get the Christian out of somewhere. Yeah, I think he covered his ass by saying I I met him in the future, as opposed to saying oh yeah, what me and him flexed before. Yeah, uh, 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 what when last week, last month? When was it? You know what I mean. So it's kind of, so it's kind of interesting. Like, it, it's a line they couldn't left, could have left out. So I think they left it in there for a reason. But like, w- 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 again, what are they gonna do? But they're gonna have randomly Superman hanging about with Green Arrow. You know what I mean. It just don't make don't, sense. It don't I make mean, sense unless Smallville, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they're going to do Superman. Yeah, it don't make sense unless there's either a Superman show or, as I said, the Earths get converged and then Kara's on Earth One. It, it just don't don't make sense. There's just randomly Superman by himself, or like that somehow like ten years from now, you've got Superman's out on Earth One. And then Kara's ship crashes, and then you kind of got the the cycle from the Supergirl show, but happening on Earth One, and it's just like yeah, but that's like ten years, and they're definitely going to be cancelled by then. No offense. Well, maybe. Remember, this is the CW Supernatural. Then what season? Thirteen, fourteen, whatever it is. Yeah. So I figure, yeah, if it does, if it does go for that, if they hit season ten, you got to think that they, they drop like another spin-off. By then, the question is, what what's that gonna be? Oh, Probably, what? yeah. But I think at this point, it's still too early to do Superman. But as soon as you do that, you know, make Supergirl look like nothing. Mm, so, yeah. But I mean, you think if you did that, you've got to spend two seasons like properly establishing stuff 
Mm-hmm. So I mean, that, also, that, that's Supergirl's leeway to get better. <laughs> oh, God two, us all. two seasons to sort it out, Supergirl, or um, in a bit. But I mean, if you tied them together, it'd probably help Supergirl's numbers. Maybe, but yeah, we don't know really. I mean, you can make the same argument about Batman. Like, would a Batman help the rest of the shows, or would everyone just stop watching them and just watch Batman instead? Also, uh, do you really want? Yeah, you know, I kind of like the CW shows. I have my frustrations with them, especially like the Flash. But do we really want them doing Batman and Superman? They didn't. I think be... I think Superman they could do. I, I I think they could pull off Superman. Batman, I have my concerns about. If they if they did the Batman thing, like series one and two of Arrow, consistently, <laughs> no beef. You know what I mean? No sweat. But <laughs> I think that they can't help themselves. That's their problem. <laughs> they really can't help themselves. So yeah. Anyway, moving on from this is that <laughs> damn reference that we've talked about for twenty minutes. Yeah, red tor- more interesting. Red tornado turned up, and he launches himself towards a base, and then Barry and the- Ray have to stop him. The only problem was, I mean, one cool thing is when Eobard goes to put the knife in to Kara, and then he's like, I can't, and then it's like the atoms there, and then I thought that was kind of cool, and then he mullers everyone off with that. That was pretty decent. Um, then I guess... Wasn't that... Our last episode, that's the next one, isn't it? No, this is this one, I think, because it's just about to cut into her, and then the atom comes out, blasts them all, and then that's when they're able to grab her and run out. And then they bump into Metallo, who blasts them. And then I think Kara gets recaptured. And then I think the rest of the... Or do they send send the signal? And I think I think they come just at the end. Because because you got, um, you got that going on. And then at the main base... Martin catches a hot lick. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Ends with, well, yeah you're right. It ends with Martin getting a hot lick, and then kind of collapsing on the floor, and then you add Firestorm or Jax. He tried to give it emotion, but like his mm. his, you know what I mean. It, it it's before, just... before you got to the the next episode, when he got a shot in this one, did you think the old man was gonna die? Uh, what, as in, oh, Martin Stein's going to be leaving, what do you think's going to happen? Uh, yeah. I, I didn't think he was going to die, no, but I think a little bit just before he got shot, I think, I think it was obvious something was going to happen, because, like, Martin, kept, he looked like he was going to do something, like, he was going to run for that thing, and, and then it, it kept flicking towards the Nazi guards and stuff like that, and that's when I was thinking, oh, he's going to get seen, he's going to get popped, and uh, J- Jack's, like, the, the fact it kind of focused on both of them, and then Jack's couldn't really, uh, at that point, I thought, oh, are they actually going to, like, pop him and stuff like that, and they did, so it was obvious at that point, beforehand, I just figured it, after this, he'd just go back to his family, so I was surprised they actually killed him, I'll admit, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll admit. but I like it, I liked it, you know what I mean, um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up that episode. Um, yeah, they killed the old man. Like, well, not yet. He dies in the next episode. Well, from an audio sense, Jax was convincing, but then when you look at his face, the guy can't cry. So yeah, you know, it was uh, it was like grey. And it was just like, I'd, I'd, there was something physically out of his performance that kind of made It's like, yo, you just see this old man get popped in the back with a shotgun. I mean, let's be serious. That's pretty distressing. And it was, to, to me, there was something a little off with his performance. See, I, I knew he was going to die because... Are you we, well enough? We talk about this. No. I, think it's a, I probably do a better job of it than Jax did, but yeah, no. I, I think... It was, and we'll talk about this in the next episode as well, it's like, they were getting real hokey and obvious for the dialogue. 
Leonard and Proffer dropped in the whole uh, he's Proffer Bane on Stein and Jack's oh you're my dad kind of thing mm. like out of nowhere it's like alright they're really playing this up now so clearly man's dropping mm. see uh, 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 I, th- I think because he's old I didn't think they were going to do it I just thought it, <laughs> it'd kind of go back because like really I was thinking okay if they gun him down it's got to mean something and really it it didn't mean anything, you know what I mean? Because they're gonna be, they're gonna take him out anyway. So it's not like him dying was a great game changer because they already kind of knew where they were going anyway. That's why I didn't see it. But when true, but I, when they split and I, it was just oh. him and Jackson, they went their separate way. That's when I, that's when I started to think, you know what I mean? Because bullets were flying everywhere, and it is one of the one of them things where you're like, okay, there's hot licks in the air. Someone's got to get caught. I mean, come on, be real. Someone's got to get caught. So, yeah. But up to that mm-hmm. point, I was nonchalant. Let's talk numbers. And the final remarks. Uh, I don't know. I guess it's on a parody. I was like an 8. I... See, I'd give it an 8.5. But, like, they introduced Ray. And, like, his CGI was so bad you know what I mean like he looked super rubbery and so did the flash when they were going after going after red tornado and like his powers like when he he just pretty much looked as bad as when firestorm does it he just shoots a couple things out his hands and he just looked like firestorm doing it and I was like there was nothing like new that made me think oh it's pretty cool you know what I mean yeah, that's a good point. I, I did I did think the same thing when he flew up and shot down. It was like, what, what is he bringing to the table that no one else is? Mm. It did seem like kind of, maybe personality-wise, it's a bit different. Even that, though, it, although it's maybe like a slightly less dorky version of Palmer. But aside from that, I didn't really see much to it. I think Captain Cobb stood out more as someone that's different. Yeah, it is it is it is a good character though. No matter which way you kind of look at it, yet whether it's like the version he is now as opposed to the slightly less good version in Legends of Tomorrow and like the bad, the kind of charismatic bad guy in in the Flash. I think it's because I think really it's down to acting. You know, Wentworth Miller to me is a good actor, so like he can do all that stuff. Just like, you know, you always say that uh, Harrison Wells like can gel with everyone, and it is like the best mm-hmm. character. It, it, I think it's generally down to Tom Kavanagh being a good actor. You know what I mean? That's why, like, you say you have a problem with Iris, kind of like with Felicity. I think it's because uh, Iri- I did, Iris although is a I will. Actress. I will say I. I thought it was better in this episode. A bit of it, yeah, not great, but I, I don't. I think, to me anyway, it was less noticeable that they didn't really gel than they did in what, episode one or wherever it was. So it was a bit. Maybe it's like they're running around and gunning and actually yeah. doing something rather than being stood in a room having a conversation. But I thought it worked better this time around. Yeah, I agree. They're actually succeeding, so it's just like oh, just that jubilant. You don't have to really flex mm. that much. You know what I mean? So yeah, I think when you when you look at that and then line them up and stuff like that, it is really down to like acting ability, and clearly she's like, um, what because. <laughs> It's weird because it's like they give her a lot to do in the Flash. You'd think she'd like be better at doing it, but really, it's like yeah, she she's not like. It's, the, it's the also best she's actress. a lot of them are hit and miss though. Mm. Look, she can do stuff. I mean, she can cry a hell of a lot better than Jack can, and she can do some of the emotional stuff. But it's like Mick Rory can cry it's like better than Jack. It's like it's like. Melissa Benoist, I, th- I, you know, I think she she's good, but sometimes she goes too far, and <laughs> she ain't doing a great job of this villain thing, like the voice. Uh, so, oh, the, why, why the evil voice? Why do you need to do that? I suppose you can say Tom Kavanagh kind of does it as well, but for some reason he just seems better at it. Mm, as I Maybe said. since I'm more used to him, though, maybe on this he's, it's easier to take him as an evil bad guy. Like, she does look kind of like a generic blonde barbie girl kind of thing which is kind of what they play up i guess like the 
you, anyone can be a superhero thing, but when you try and make her a villain, less effective. I think because... The... <laughs> I don't make my point, but there's something that... Like, the, the dark lipstick does wonders for her complexion. It makes her skin okay. look. It makes her skin look grey. Uh, again, yeah. If you kind of bring it down to that, you need a couple more episodes in Supergirl where she's under the influence of Red Kryptonite to kind of get a gauge of the kind of evil Kara. Um, yeah, because it's a bit jarring. Because I mean, on that, like Tom Wellen was always better when he was evil. It, it was what, yeah, when you could see him like struggling was when he had to be proper good guy kind of superman crap but like you know like remember this is a bit random remember that scene towards the end of the show when he was playing like superman in the future and clark kent in the same scene yeah in the in an elevator in the lift and like the clark kent was really bad it was super hokey he's not good at delivering those lines mm. and the lines so are it just super depends goofy what you're anyway. for. if you're gonna yeah they to... are but you know chris reeve could pull it off mm. uh, again acting ability you know what i mean because yeah. I mean, you have to be, you have to be some sort of, especially now in the more modern times where, where you say truth, justice, and the American way. Like when you deliver a line like that, in even in like more modern time and stuff like that, where there's a million different ways you can phrase it. If you're gonna kick it old school, you gotta have some sort of ability just for you to not be oh. You know what I mean? True, that's not that's not re- it's not really Superman anymore. Anyway, it's like yeah, Dean Cain never would have said that in that show because it was like a modern Superman. So yeah, mm. fair enough. So yeah, let's wrap it up. <laughs> uh, I'll get, I'll, I'll, <laughs> you I, know, for, for a show about a Superman in it, we should have spent a long time talking about him. Well, it, it's not my fault that they keep they keep True. pushing me to do it. Yeah, I I don't know whether I gave my number, but yeah, eight. I would have given it an 8.5, but the CGI was very telling. And that's all mm-hmm. I have to say. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And we make sure the CGI is great on the Superhero Hub. See you next time.